Yes, you did in fact read that title correctly. We now can do completely automated recurring tasks, which are tasks with repeating due dates inside of Notion. Check this out. Here, I've got an inbox inside of my task manager in Notion. This is using my ultimate tasks template, and I've got a bunch of tasks that I want to recur with different recur intervals. Here we have an overdue recurring task that is supposed to happen at the end of every month. Here I've got a workout, which actually recurs every Tuesday and Thursday. Here is taking vitamins, which happens every single day, etc. And I want you to pay attention to both the due date column here and the checkbox column, the done column, once I start checking these tasks off. Because in just a couple of seconds, you're going to see these completely update themselves again auto magically. Now there's some good news and some bad news associated with this. Let's talk about the bad news first. This is not a feature release video. As of this video's recording, Notion has not yet given us a completely native in the app recurring tasks function. However, the good news, it doesn't really matter because as you just saw, we have a completely automated solution to share with you inside of this video. And the best part about it is number one, you do not need to do any coding whatsoever to get it done. It's actually a pretty easy setup, especially if you follow my instructions. And number two, you can do it completely free. So I'm gonna be splitting this video into two different parts. The first part is gonna be completely focused on Notion and it's sort of the manual part of the process. I'm gonna show you the combination of properties and formulas that actually drives our recurring tasks engine and show you how you can set up your own recur criteria, be it recurring every single day or specific days of the week, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or even every three months on the last weekday of the month. There are quite a few different combinations that you can use for your tasks using this solution. Solution. And if you want to stop there, you can use the tried and true manual recurring task solution that I've been using for a couple of years where you just manually update your due date column to what's displayed in the next due property, which will then update next due itself just like this. So that's a pretty easy way to do it if you don't want to mess around with any automated bots. But what's really cool and what's going to take up the second half of the video is that we can automate this. And uh, in that second half, I'm going to show you how to do this automation with two different apps. The first is going to be with make.com, which is formerly Integromat. It is going to be my recommended and preferred solution because it is actually free to do. Now, the one drawback with using make.com is that make is a very complicated and powerful platform. So the initial setup is a little bit more complicated than it's going to be with our second tool, which will be automate.io. However, this is a complete step-by-step -step tutorial. So I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do. And if you follow the instructions, it shouldn't be too hard. So I will recommend make as my primary tool for that part of the process. But if you are willing to pay $9 a month and you do want a slightly easier setup process, automate.io, which is another tool and actually one that Notion itself acquired last year, uh, is also a tool that will work for this process. So I'll have them both in this video. Unfortunately, I will not have a tutorial for Zapier because right now Zapier's Notion integration is broken. So please get on fixing that Zapier. And once you do, I will have the written version of this tutorial updated with a Zapier section. And if reading is more your speed or you just want to double check something, I will have that link in the description down below. Last bit of housekeeping before we dive into the technical tutorial part of this video is that I have a huge update out now for the ultimate tasks, task manager and project manager template that I've been offering for the last couple of years. This is the biggest update we have ever done. And it includes all of this recurring tasks logic within it. So you don't have to do it inside of Notion for yourself. You can just duplicate my template and then you could follow the last half of this video to automate it if you want. And Ultimate Tasks has a bunch of other cool features like subtask support and a daily journal feature and smart lists and a project area with progress bars. So if you do want to try managing your tasks inside of Notion, check it out. I'll have that linked in the description down below as well. So with all that being said, let's get into how we do recurring tasks inside of Notion. And if you watched my original recurring tasks video way back in 2020, it was actually my first video on this channel, you will know that the way we handled recurring tasks back then was pretty simple. For any task like this take vitamins task right here, we would open it up and we would add a number in this little property called recur interval. This is just a number property and it would inform our next due property, which is actually a formula to uh, basically iterate the due date 
a certain number of days into the future. It was pretty simplistic, but I did have some uh, logic in there to handle overdue tasks. That was pretty much it. Now, thanks to the efforts of my developer and one of my best friends, Martin Bamey, who has been working on this for a couple of weeks, we have a lot more capability inside of our recurring task solution and ultimate tasks. Instead of just recurring by a specific number of days, we can now do pretty much any recurrentable that you could use inside of any other project or task management app like ClickUp or Todoist or Microsoft To Do. If you can do it there, you can probably do it here with very few exceptions. So now to set recurring tasks, and I'm actually gonna go over to a new little blank copy of ultimate tasks that I was uh, setting up for this video, you first create yourself a task. So I'm gonna call this one, let's just say workout and set a due date for it. So let's just say uh, today I wanna work out. Actually, I already did that today, so later I will check it off. And to set up your recurrent of all, you wanna open up this task. And once you do, you're gonna see three useful little properties. First, we have our classic recur interval, which actually means that our new update to ultimate tasks is completely backwards compatible. You can just put a number in here and it's gonna count forward a specific number of days, but we also have a property called recur unit and another property called, uh, which is a bit of a mouthful, days only if set to one days. So I will explain that in a second. Uh, first, we have recur unit. This is sort of the heart and soul of our recurring task solution. When you open it up, you're going to see several different choices for how you can recur. So we can go by days, we can go by weeks, we can go by months, and then we have a few more advanced options. You can do months on the last day, since the last day of the month changes every single month between the 30th or the 30th first or in February the 29th or 28th, we can do months on the last and first weekday, or we can recur by a number of years. So let's just say I wanted to do every single day. I could just put one here and I could change this to days or actually leave it blank because the default is days. If I wanted to recur every single week, I could go ahead and change this to every one weeks. And now you can see we have a due date of March 22nd and the next due is March 29th. If I wanted to go every two weeks, I would simply change this to two and I would get April 5th. And again, this does handle overdue tasks. So let's say I haven't done my workout in months and I was supposed to work out January 4th, the next due is still going to be March 29th because there is logic in there to handle overdue tasks. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to March 22nd and I'll show you some of the more fancy options as well. Let's just say I wanted to actually work out on the last weekday of every single month, or maybe, have, maybe every other month actually. Uh, right now we see our due date as March 22nd, but the next one is actually May 31st, which if we go in here and look at May, we can see is indeed a weekday. Now, what if you want to recur on specific days of the week, like Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, or Tuesday and Thursday? This would actually be a little bit more useful for a task like working out, wouldn't it? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and set this again to March 22nd. I'm going to set my recur interval to one. I'm going to set my recur unit to day. And now we have this property coming into play. Days only if set to one days. And uh, the reason this property is called what it is is to basically tell you if you want to recur by specific days in the week, you have to have your recur interval set to days and recur interval has to be set to one. So this needs to be like this if you wanna use this property. But once you do, uh, you can choose as many of the days of the week as you want. So I'm going to choose Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, which are my common workout days. And we'll be able to see that the next due for this task is March 24th, which we can see is a Thursday. If I set this to Thursday, we'll see that it's now due on March 26th, which is a Saturday. And if I set it to Saturday, then it should be next due on the 29th, right? And there it is, March 29th, 2022. So by using these three properties in combination, you can set, again, pretty much any recur interval you want. And if you're okay using the old school method of simply moving your due date to the date displayed in next due, you can manually handle recurring tasks inside of Notion. The one thing to note is that if you're gonna do it that way, the done checkbox is completely useless for recurring tasks. And the reason for that is right now, Notion doesn't provide us a way internally within the app without using the API and apps like automate or make.com. It doesn't provide us a way to check off a checkbox or edit any writable property whatsoever and have that automatically change another property. There's just no way to do that without using the API and these external tools. So you wouldn't use the done checkbox, but you would just change your due date and your filter criteria will probably kick that task out of certain areas like your today or your tomorrow or your next seven days view. So that is recurring tasks 
inside of Notion the manual way. If you are curious about how this works, I actually will be linking to a documentation page in the description. And the reason that I'm going to explain it there is the formula that Martin wrote to make all this work. Let me just give you a small taste of what this looks like. It is absolutely massive. And it utilizes some helper properties that we had to code in to uh, help Notion's performance because the original formula he wrote was like over a thousand lines and it was slowing Notion down. So he figured out how to split things out into a few different helper properties. Uh, there are some cases where the formula won't even parse if it doesn't need to. So it keeps Notion running nice and fast, but it does all these different cool recur combinations. So from there, we are going to be moving into the fun part of this video, which is automating this. So we can check off the done property right here and actually just let this thing do its thing as it would in Todoist or ClickUp or any other app that you might use. And to do that, we are first going to go over to another copy of Ultimate Tasks that I have prepped for this video. Uh, and this is going to be the copy we are going to be working on with make.com. So I'm gonna come back to this inbox here and I've got some pre-prepped tasks that we are going to use to test our automation. And the first thing we need to do is go over to, again, make.com. Uh, if you haven't got an account already, you wanna create that. And then you wanna come over to this little scenarios tab on make and click create a new scenario. And this is where we're going to search for Notion and start creating our bot or our automation. So let's click the plus button right here, search for Notion and click it. And then when we get this uh, listing of the actions or uh, triggers or items that we can look at, what we wanna pick for the first part of this bot is the search objects option right here. So I'm going to click that. And next I wanna click add right here in the connection area because I need to actually authenticate this scenario with Notion and give it access to a very specific page inside of my Notion workspace, my ultimate tasks template. So I'm gonna click add right here. I want the connection type to be Notion public, not Notion internal. And it doesn't matter what I name it. So I'm just going to name it my Notion public connection. I'm gonna click save and it's gonna open up a little access window right here. And this is where I'm gonna give make access to, again, the specific page inside of my Notion workspace that it's going to need access to. So first I wanna switch my workspace from College Info Geek over to my workspace, uh, personal workspace, because that's where I am doing this demo. And I'm going to click select pages right here. Don't worry about any of this. And it's now going to ask me which of these I want to add. So because we are working on this ultimate tasks video make page, I'm gonna click that. And then due to Notion's cascading permissions feature, any page within that page that we just checked is also going to be available to the make integration, which means the uh, database we wanna work on will be available. So all I need to do is click that top level page. I need to click allow access and the connection is now verified. So the next thing I'm gonna do is search for database items, and I need to pass the database ID for the all tasks database inside of uh, Notion. So I'm gonna go back to Notion, and to get to that, we actually need to get to the specific database, not this page, because currently we are just sitting on a page inside of Ultimate Tasks that has a linked database view on it. We need to get to the actual database. So to do that, I'm gonna come back up to the Ultimate Tasks homepage. I wanna open up this views toggle right here, and I'm going to click on the all tasks page right here. This is how you access the master tasks database inside of Ultimate Tasks. Now I'm just gonna hit Control L on Windows, which will copy the URL of this page to my clipboard on a Mac, it'll be command L and I'm going to open a notepad instance here in windows because I need a very specific string from this URL. I need the database ID. And when you copy a database link or URL to your clipboard within notion, the ID of that database is whatever is between the slash after the SO in notion.so and the question mark over here, which starts a query string right here. So I'm going to copy from this nine to this nine. And that is going to be my database ID. Over in make, I need to pass that database ID to the bot that we are building. And this is going to kick off the process of allowing us to search our database and look for any task that is done and is a recurring task so our bot can then update it. So I need to add some filters here. There are three that we wanna add. The first one being the done checkbox. 
and we are going to select equals. And then in this third field here, we're gonna click it and we get this little window here full of functions we can actually drag in. The interesting thing about make is it basically is giving you access to pretty much all the functions of the API in uh, a GUI here, a graphical interface. So you have a lot of what you can actually use through code if you know how to program, you know how to use the API, you have, a, you have access to a lot of that stuff that apps like Zapier or Zapier and uh, Automate.io kind of hide from you. Make is really the most technical of these apps. So that's why this process is just a little bit more involved than it is with Automate.io. So here we're gonna grab this true keyword and we're gonna drag it right here. So essentially we are filtering through our data database to number one, find tasks where the done checkbox is actually been checked off. Remember the checkbox property is a Boolean operator. It's true, false. When it's checked, it's true. When it's unchecked, it's false. And we want to only find tasks that have been checked off. So we're doing done equals true. And remember to always look for that checkbox property. We're going to add another and rule. We want it to be an and rule because we need all of these filter criteria to be true. And here we are going to look for the next do formula property. We're going to come down into our second field here and we're going to look for this formula uh, section. And we want to make sure that it is not empty. So we're going to do text is not empty, but make double sure that you're underneath this formula subsection for this field, because there are other text is not empty choices. So text is not empty Boolean again, under that formula field. And finally, we want to grab true here. So we just basically want to make sure that the next do area is not empty because that would indicate it's a recurring task, not a one-time task. And finally, we're going to add one more and filter here. We're going to open up this little drop down and once again, find that next do formula uh, here in our second drop down, we're going to go once again to that formula subsection, not text. And we want to choose text does not equal. And then you want to paste in this string here, which I will have in the description down below and also in the written blog post version of this tutorial. But essentially you can screenshot it here if you need to, error in recur interval, colon, non-whole or negative number. This is essentially an error check. If you put a negative number in your recur interval or you put uh, you know, a 1.2 in your recur interval, it will throw an error instead of giving you a date because it can't use those numbers to determine what the next due date should be. So we just wanna make sure that we don't pull any tasks that actually have this. Finally, in the limit area, we want to type in 100. And that is going to be it for this part of the bot. Now, before we move on, we need to go over to Notion and do something. We need to go over to Notion and we need to check off one of our recurring tasks. Just one, it could be more than one, but it just needs to be at least one. And the reason for this is uh, as we're building this bot, make.com needs to actually see at least one task that fits our filter criteria we just set up, which to remind you is a done checkbox, uh, a non-empty next due property and a non error errored next to property. So I'm just going to check off this take vitamins task here and uh, that's gonna give make what it needs. So now we can come back to make.com and before I make the next part of this, I want to hit run once down in the bottom left corner here. And when I do that, I should get a green check mark with no errors here. So if you get an error, open up the little bot here and make sure that there's nothing different from my example here. And now, because we've run it, Make now has some data from our Notion database that we can use for our second step. So we're gonna hover over this little circle here and to the right, we're gonna see add another module. I'm gonna hit that and I'm going to once again click Notion, but this time I wanna select update a database item. So the first part of the bot that we already created was searching the database for done recurring tasks. The next half of the bot we're creating is is the logic that will actually update those recurring tasks for us. So we wanna pick update a database item. Uh, once again, I need to pass the database ID, but before I paste it in, I'm going to change enter a database ID from select from the list uh, over to enter manually. And then I'm going to paste in my database ID. So I'm once again gonna open my little notepad that I had here, grab that database ID. Once again, remember it is between the slash here and the question mark here. Copy that, paste it in. And now here in the page ID area, I want to grab this page ID object from the star tab of this little modal that we have here. So again, if you don't see this, it means that you didn't have a done task in your original uh, run one scenario from the first part of this tutorial. If it, if it didn't get any information from Notion uh, because of the filter criteria, you're not gonna see all this 
you know, useful information here. So I'm gonna grab page ID and I'm gonna put it right here. And now I'm gonna set up the fields that we actually want the bot to update. So I'm gonna add an item right here. And the first one is going to be called do. I'm literally just gonna type in the word do, and then I'm gonna choose a value type, which is going to be a uh, date property here. And now we are going to do what I think is the most complicated part of this tutorial. So pay double attention to this part. Uh, I screwed it up and Martin was telling me how to do it. In the start time area of date, we wanna click here. And the first thing we wanna do is come over to this calendar icon across the uh, top menu bar in this modal. So click right here and underneath functions, we are going to find a function called parse date. And that is the last one actually. So I can actually grab this and I can drag it into start time. And it is gonna give us a parse date function with parentheses, a semicolon, and we're gonna have a little cursor in here where we can actually do stuff, drag stuff. So the first thing I actually wanna drag is back over in the star tab, I want to come here and find the properties underscore value uh, item here. Underneath this, which should be opened by default, but if you need to, you can toggle it open, uh, there's going to be an option for the next do property. So let's go ahead and find that next do property, which is gonna be, where is it? Right here, open that up, and inside of that, you're going to find the string object. So we're gonna click and drag this, and we want it between the first parenthesis and the semicolon. So drag and drop it right there. Properties underscore value, next do, string. And then on the opposite side of the semicolon, I'm going to click and place my cursor and paste this text. Four M's, M, 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 space, D, D, comma, Y, 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 Y. This is the date format of the next do property. So that is what we want there. And then the only other thing we want to add, I'll get rid of this little modal here, is one last item to uncheck our done checkbox. So the key here is going to be done. This is the name of our property. The value type is going to be a checkbox. And we are simply going to set this to no. So to review what we've set up in this step, again, this is the update step of the uh, make.com bot. We are essentially, once again, looking at the ID of the database we're trying to edit. We are grabbing the page ID of the um, object that was searched in our first part of the automation, basically any task that had been marked done and that was a recurring task. And we are updating first the do property to match the property that was in next do, our formatted date. So we're updating the do date. And then we are also updating the done checkbox to now be unchecked. And what you are looking at here is essentially the logic that is baked in to any other task manager you've ever used. This is the code behind the scenes. When you check that done checkbox, a little bot goes, oh, I'm gonna update that next due date, and then I'm going to uncheck the checkbox once again so they can you know, do the task one more time when they need to do it. So we're gonna click okay here, and then to finish up our bot, we need to add a filter in between these two steps. So let's click right here, and you're gonna see a little modal called set up a filter, and let's go ahead and label it check results. Uh, the condition is going to be page ID once again, so we can drag that in there, and then all we want to do is set this to exists. Uh, and this will stop your make bot from sending you emails in case there is a time it runs and there were no recurring tasks checked off. So that is our finished make.com automation, which will become the engine of your recurring tasks inside of Notion. The only thing we have to do now is set up a recur interval for the bot itself to check your Notion database. And this is where we have to have a bit of a discussion on how make.com runs their pricing. Because unlike automate.io and Zapier and other apps uh, that hide their multi-step bot options behind paid plans, make.com actually gives you access to pretty much all of their tools on their free plan, but they do limit you to a thousand actions per month. So what is an action? Well, for one, every single time we run this script here, that's going to count as an action. And for two, every time we update one of those tasks in our database, that is also going to count as an action. So with a thousand actions to use every single month, we want to make sure that we are strategically setting our schedule setting right here, because if you think about it, if we're running every single 15 minutes, that's an action 
every 15 minutes, which means four actions per hour, which means 96 actions per day. So you're going to run out of that action quota within about 10 days without even checking off any tasks in your database. No bueno. And if you think about it, you don't really need to be checking your database for checked off recurring tasks every 15 minutes because most recurring tasks are going to recur, you know, at most once a day. So instead of at regular intervals here and every 15 minutes, I'm going to set this run scenario to go every single day and I'm going to change the time to midnight. Essentially every night at midnight, all of my recurring tasks are going to be updated if they need to be. So I'll set 12 AM there and I'm going to hit okay. This means that I'm going to have one check per day, which means at most I'm going to have 31 checks per month. And that leaves me 969 possible recurring tasks that I can have updated every month without paying for make.com. And that is how we can do free automated recurring tasks inside of Notion. If you need, for some reason, more than 969 recurring tasks every single month inside of Notion, you can pay for one of their paid plans that'll bump you up to like 10,000 actions or even more. So, with all of that being said, I'm going to show you how this works by hitting this little run once button. So once again, let's look at our inbox here. I'm gonna check off all these tasks so we can see all of them update. And let's go back to make.com. We'll hit run once right here. And then we will go over to Notion to watch the fireworks. Check that out. Pretty cool, huh? So now we're going to round this video out with the tutorial over on automate.io. This is the non-free option, which is why I'm making it last, but it is actually a bit of an easier setup process. If you have an account with automate.io, you'll want to go ahead and log into it and you'll want to make sure that you are at least on their personal plan, which as of today is $9 a month because otherwise it doesn't give you access to multi-step bots and we need to create a multi-step bot here in Automate in order to do the filtering that we did over on the make.com side. It's basically the same overall logic here. It's just a bit of an easier setup. So assuming you are on that plan, we are first going to go over to our test workspace for make.com. So let's go ahead and find that in my Notion workspace. Aha, it's the one with blueberries here. And I've got an inbox right here. So same kind of deal. We've got a bunch of recurring tasks set up. One thing we don't actually have to do for this version is um, check off one of these boxes. It doesn't actually matter, but we do need to get the database ID just like we did for make.com. So I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna open up my views toggle. I'm gonna go to all tasks. And once again, I'm gonna hit that control or command L shortcut to copy the link to my clipboard. And I am going to paste it here in notepad so I can then extract the database ID. If you skipped the make.com portion, your database ID, which we need to pass to automate.io to automate these recurring tasks is between the slash at the end of notion.so and the question mark right here. So right now I want to copy from this trailing B to this C right here. I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and I'm going to have that ready to go when I create my automate bot. So that will actually allow automate.io to talk to this database. So within automate.io, what you do is you create bots. I'm going to turn off my old bot right here. And I'm first going to go over to the apps area because if you are new to automate.io, you're going to want to add notion as an app to your, my apps area, and you're going to want to authenticate it. So I'm going to actually show you how I would do that by clicking the three dot menu here. And I'm going to reconnect it. Uh, you won't be reconnected you will be connecting for the first time, but it's pretty much going to be the same process. We're going to authorize right here with Notion, and then it's going to ask us which pages we want to give access to. So I'm going to switch over to my personal workspace because that's where I'm doing this demo. I'm going to click select pages, and I'm going to choose the ultimate tasks video automate page here. And again, because of Notion's cascading permissions feature, every single page within uh, all sub pages of this ultimate tasks video automate page here are going to be accessible to the automate.io integration. All we need to do is check this and we're good to go. Hit allow access. And now we have a successful authentication here in automate.io. Click save right there. And now we can begin the bot building process. Head on over to the bots area of the menu here. Hit create a bot right here. And let's get to work first by selecting our trigger app, which is going to be in this case, Notion. I'll grab that and we want to select updated database item as our trigger. Now for the database, I'm actually going to hit the drop down here and I'm going to use a custom value. I could go actually find my task list here, but custom value is what we have found to work best. And I'm going to paste that database ID 
just like I did over on the make.com portion of this tutorial. From here, what I wanna do is actually set up some filters. And these are gonna be the same filters that I used on the make.com version, but they're a little bit easier to set up. We're just going to select action apps here. We're gonna choose the filter option and we're gonna click continue only if, which is actually our only option here. So first for our parameter, we are going to find the done property, page property done. And we just wanna make sure that it is equal to, so equals string true which would indicate that our checkbox has been checked. Remember that a checkbox property in Notion is a Boolean, so it is a yes, no, or true, false condition, where checked equals true and unchecked equals false. So we're making sure that our done checkbox is true, and if so, we'll go on to the next step. Uh, again, this is why we need access to multi-step bots inside of Automate.io, because we cannot create this filter combo with a single step bot, unfortunately. So again, filters, we're going to go continue only if, and this this time we're gonna find that next do property. So next do, and we first wanna make sure that it's not empty, so boom. And we want one more filter, which is again going to target our next do property. So continue only if page property next do. And this one we wanna say does not equal string. And we're gonna paste in this error handling string right here. It says error in recur interval colon non-whole or negative number. I will have this linked in the description down below, also in the written version of this tutorial. Essentially, this is an error string that's going to be thrown if you put like 1.2 or negative 50 in the recur interval property over in Notion because you can't really calculate a recur interval based on those numbers. So we wanna throw an error if that is the case and we wanna make sure our bots only continue if that error isn't thrown. Finally, we need to format our date. So we're gonna choose the formatter app by automate.io. We're going to format the date and we're gonna come over to our input date and time where we're once again gonna find that next do property. So here we're basically pulling in the date from the next do property and we're allowing Notion to be the engine uh, of our recurring tasks solution here. And we're just going to format it and then spit it right back over into the do property. So to do that, we have to choose a target format and I actually want to use a custom value because none of these will work. We're gonna click custom value here. And for our custom value, we're gonna type dd-mmm-yyyy. So dd, triple m, quadruple y with dashes in between. And UTC can be left there. It doesn't actually matter because we're not passing a time property right now. And finally, we're going to add our update action. So choose notion from this final action number five here. We are going to update a database item and we are going to once again use a custom value for our database and the custom value is gonna be that exact same database ID that we pasted here. So just to be double, triple sure I'm using the same one, I'm gonna copy it from this field and I'm gonna come right over here and I'm going to paste it right there. Now for the page item area, we want to use a custom value and the custom value is going to be the item ID which you can actually get over here from our first step. Now I'm pretty zoomed in, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of finagling here to grab it and then drag it over to page item ID. And now we can actually see item ID right here. And now all we have to do is actually come down here and update the properties that we want to update. So first we are going to set done to no, as going to uncheck our done checkbox. And finally we are going to take from the bottom of action number four, our formatted date and time, and we're gonna just drag it to the start date here in action number five under the do property. So once again, to review, we are updating the do property with the formatted date and time from our next do property, allowing Notion to be the engine of our date calculation. And we are updating the done checkbox to now be unchecked. That is it. All we need to do is hit save at that point and we can turn the bot on. And once we've done that, we can now actually test the bot using some live data. So what I need to do is open Notion. I need to actually update one of my database items and then we can click this I'm done button and see the fireworks happen. So let's go over to Notion real quick and let's go back to our inbox again for this ultimate tasks video automate. I'm making sure I'm working on the page containing the database that I set up in my bot. And I'm just gonna go ahead and check off all of these bad boys so I can watch them all get updated. Back over to automate.io, I'm gonna hit I'm done and we are going to wait. And now you'll see it go through all these steps and I'm actually gonna click back over to Notion so we can watch the dates update automatically. 
And there it is. Again, completely automated recurring tasks inside of Notion. I am now using this for my task management. And once again, if you wanna use it for your task management, the starting point is gonna to be to use the Ultimate Tasks Task Manager uh, template, which I have linked down in the description below and which is completely free. You're also completely welcome to build your own templates using the formulas that we have provided. I've got documentation for those formulas and how to build them into your own templates in the description as well. But I think for most people, this is kind of a complicated setup and we've done a lot of the work for you. So um, I'd recommend just grabbing ultimate tasks and then following one of those tutorials that I just went through to actually get the bots running and the automations going for you. If you want to take your productivity even further inside of Notion, I've got a brand new template coming out very soon called Ultimate Brain, which is a complete and comprehensive second brain template for Notion. It has ultimate tasks as its heart. So you can do all that advanced project and task management, including subtasks and recurring tasks. And on top of that, it also includes a full-fledged note-taking system. And it uses the para organization system that Tiago Forte teaches and is building a second brain course for the entire templates organization. And there are also smart dashboards like a my day dashboard for planning your day, a quick capture dashboard, and lots, lots more. You can get on the wait list for that template uh, in the description down below or by going to thomasjfrank.com slash brain. And once you're on that list, you'll also have the option to opt into my Notion Tips email newsletter. So if you want to get updated when I drop new tutorials like this one, new templates, all kinds of new stuff around Notion, taking Notion to the next level, you want to get on that newsletter. Beyond that, I have lots of resources in the description for this video, including a full written version of the tutorial with lots of screenshots. So if I was going too fast for you and you didn't want to set YouTube to 0.5x for some reason, listen to me sound like I'm in slow-mo, then you can check out that blog post. Uh, you'll always be able to access that. And I've got lots of other little documentation things down there. So check them out. Thanks for watching. Let me know what your questions are in the comments down below or on Twitter. I'm Tom Frankly over over there. Follow me if you haven't done so already. I think my tweets are pretty cool. Beyond that, I will see you in the next video.